Good afternoon and welcome to TVM News. Today is Friday, November 19th. I'm Emma Rushworth. And I'm Ellen Franz. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. This week we have news about a Marywood club hosting a charity drive around campus. We also have an update on the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. And we'll check in with TVM sports anchors Soren Svonson and Nevicol Molinero to find out the latest in Marywood and professional sports. Two Marywood professors were on WVIA to promote the upcoming orchestra and choir concert. Dr. Evan Harger and Dr. Rick Hoffenberg were interviewed by WVIA-FM for an interview that aired Wednesday morning. The two professors advertised this weekend's concert, an oratorio of Michael Tippett's A Child of Our Time. The concert will take place this Sunday at 4 p.m. in the Performing Arts Center. Today concludes International Education Week. During the week, Marywood Center for Global Engagement hosted a series of talks about different countries and their cultures. On Wednesday, there was even a soulful dinner with an international twist. The purpose of the week was to celebrate the benefits of international education and exchange worldwide. A Marywood club is holding a charity drive around campus. The Marywood chapter of the Students Organized to Uphold Life, or SOUL, is hosting a diaper drive until December 1st. Donation boxes can be found around campus. Students and faculty are encouraged to donate diapers, wipes, and other baby items, and all donations will be given to the St. Joseph's Baby and Children's Pantry. Monday, November 15th was Philanthropy Day here at Marywood. The theme was Building Community Through Giving. The Office of Alumni Engagement and the Student Alumni Association hosted a scavenger hunt for students to collect stamps at all the different buildings that were built due to the donations to the school for a chance to win a t-shirt and raise awareness to how far gifts from donors can go. The Friends of the Poor's 45th Annual Thanksgiving Community Program begins this week. An interfaith service will be held tonight at 7 p.m. at Temple Hesed in Scranton. Thanksgiving dinner will be served on Tuesday, November 23rd from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. at the Scranton Cultural Center. Finally, a drive through giveaway will take place at the Armed Forces Reserve on Olivant Avenue on Wednesday, November 24th from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. For more information, visit the Friends of the Poor website. When we come back, we'll tell you about a Tunkhannock man who was arrested at the White House. More people identifying as long haulers who are having symptoms for weeks, if not months, after their initial infection. Continue to wear a mask, socially distance, and wash your hands. Together, we can keep COVID out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Hey, let's check out this park. Oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. I don't think we're free in this country. For a hundred years, you saw black people menaced and targeted and lynched and beaten and brutalized. I think we're burdened by this history. More people have to be willing to do that uncomfortable, inconvenient thing that justice requires for things to get better. Truth can inspire change. Learn more at EJI.org. Welcome back. A woman accused of killing her nephew died suddenly this weekend. Jamie Jackson of Clinton County died after what officials are calling a medical emergency on Sunday. Jackson was accused of killing her nine-year-old nephew, Anson Stover, last year. The district attorney believes her nephew was tortured before he died. Jackson suffered the medical emergency at the Clinton County Correctional Facility, where she was being held ahead of her trial. A Tunkhannock man was arrested at the White House gates for making terroristic threats. Police say Joseph Frank threatened an elderly relative, smashed their windows, and then took off. He was later found in D.C. at the White House gate and is being brought back to Tunkhannock. In what officials are calling a miracle, a father and daughter were found alive after a small plane crash in Luzerne County. 
State police in Wilkes-Barre were contacted by the FAA about a plane that dropped off their radar after rapidly descending. The search and rescue crews searched for hours Sunday night before finding the 58-year-old father and his 13-year-old daughter huddled in, in the plane wreckage in the early stages of hyperthermia. State Trooper Sergeant John Richards said in his 28 years of searching for small plane wreckages, this is the only time he has recovered the victims alive. An elementary school is closed in Luzerne County due to the number of positive COVID-19 cases. The State Health Department has advised the Crestwood School District to close Rice Elementary due to the outbreak of COVID-19. The students will learn virtually starting on November 15th and will return to in-person teaching on November 20th, 22nd. A man and baby were found dead in a Bradford County house that was destroyed by a fire. The one-year-old girl and her father, a 34-year-old man, were found inside the trailer after it had burned to ash. Police, ha police have not released the names of the victims or concluded the cause of the fire. Two cats and a dog inside were able to escape. State police and a fire marshal are investigating the fire in Bradford County. Athletes in Scranton honored veterans for 24 hours straight on Saturday. Every hour for 24 hours, members of the Steamtown CrossFit in the city did a different workout named after veterans in the northeastern and central Pennsylvania areas. This is the gym's fourth year during this, doing this event, and all of the proceeds were donated to Operation Enduring Warrior, which helps support wounded veterans. A holiday market was held in Clark Summit over the weekend. The Dorothy Pacella Holiday Market was held from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the Abington Community Library. Vendors displayed local handmade gifts, handmade products, and more. Baskets were awful ra raffled off for attendees. The Scranton teacher strike is now in its second week and there is still no negotiation in sight. The hundreds of unionized teachers on the picket line sent a proposal to the school board on Sunday night that the school board said they would quote, analyze and then respond. The strike needs to end by November 30th so the students can get the 180 days of education that the state requires. When we come back, we'll tell you about a synagogue that caught on fire on Halloween. Myth. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you want to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight, he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago, in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth hop in ha 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 that's when jordan knew he was buzzed so when it was time to go he got a ride home instead of driving be a legend like jordan recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home buzz driving is drunk driving i am what hunger looks like in america i am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school because this may be the last time i'll have lunch till september I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs and that's still not enough to put food on the table. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Welcome back. A Texas State Guard member is accused of setting fire to a synagogue on Halloween. Franklin Barrett Sechrist, 18, was caught on security film carrying fuel and toilet paper to Congregation Beth Israel on Halloween, shortly before the synagogue was set ablaze. Sechrist was charged with federal arson for the fire, which led to $25,000 in damages. Queen Elizabeth II had to miss the annual Remembrance Day ceremony on Sunday after she reportedly sprained her back. Buckingham Palace announced that the monarch had to postpone her first public outing since spending time in the hospital. The wreath that she usually lies on the United Kingdom National War Memorial in Westminster was put down this year by her son, Prince Charles. President Biden signed the $555 billion infrastructure bill into law on Monday. 
In one of the first legislative victories for his administration, the president said, quote, My message to the American people is this. America's moving again, and your life is going to change for the better. The bill will provide funding for better roads, removing lead pipes, expanding access to broadband internet, and shifting towards electric vehicles. The Rockefeller Christmas tree has officially been placed at Rockefeller Plaza in New York City. The 79-foot, 12-ton Norway spruce arrived in the city on Saturday. It is the first tree to have come from Maryland in the, 600, in the 800 years that the Rockefeller tree has been in place. Closing arguments were given in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse on Monday. 18-year-old Rittenhouse traveled to Kenosha, Wisconsin during the Black Lives Matter protests surrounding the shooting of Jacob Blake. He then shot three people, killing two. Rittenhouse claimed self-defense, that the men were attacking him. Prosecutors refute this claim, saying that Rittenhouse's intent was to incite violence. We have an update to this story. Minutes ago, the jury acquitted Rittenhouse on all charges. For the past two months, the number of coronavirus cases in Central and Eastern Europe have skyrocketed. These areas are the lowest vaccinated regions in the entire European continent. Leaders have been slow to react as the hospitals fill up. This marks the return of Europe as the international epicenter of the coronavirus. Vermont Senator Patrick Lee has announced he will not seek re-election in 2022. The Democratic Senator, who serves as the chair of the Appropriations Committee and the Senate, Senate President Pro Tempore, announced his retirement after 46 years in Congress. The 81-year-old Senator is currently the longest-serving Senator in Congress. Lee notably presided over the second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. This week, the White House hosted the first Tribal Nation Summit since 2016. President Biden is using this summit to announce his plans for improving justice and public safety for Native Americans, along with improving their rights to protect private lands, treaty rights, and sacred places. The summit corresponds with National Native American Heritage Month. When we come back, we'll check in with TVM sports anchors Nevika Molinero and Soren Svonson for the latest in Marywood and professional sports. COVID-19 has changed how we express our faith and gather to worship. Now it's time to take the first step and let us get back to spreading the word without spreading concern. Before we can safely come together, we need the facts. As COVID-19 vaccines become available, you may have questions. Should I get it? Is it safe? Should I wait? It's smart to question. Now, get the facts at GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel, and your phone out of sight. When not in your hand trying to text somebody back, because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to TVM News. Let's check in with Nevika Molinero to get the latest Marywood sports update. So Nevika, what's been going on in the world of Marywood sports? Well, Emma, winter sports have started. Yes, we love basketball season. Tell us more. Thanks, Emma. After an astonishing season, the Marywood women's soccer season has come to a close. On November 13th, the girls went up against Stockton University in the ECAC Championship, where they were defeated 3-0. Our Pacers finished as the number three seed with a record of 13 wins, five losses, and one tie. The team also set the record for most players selected to the Atlantic East Conference first team in a season. Rebecca Baker was selected as the first team goalie, while Brooke Longstreet, Ashlyn Jess, and Mackenzie Bennett were selected as the first team defense. 
Josie Score was selected to the first team midfield in addition to being awarded the AEC Offensive Player of the Year. Maddie Blackshrile, Riley Malarin, and Victoria Titus were selected to the first team offense. Lastly, the women's soccer coaching staff was awarded Coaching Staff of the Year. After being off to a rocky start, the Marywood men's swimming and diving team has begun their season turnaround. After a four-game losing streak, the Pacers took home a hard-fought 107-104 victory over Immaculata University on November 13th. Up next, the Pacers will be competing in the Diamond City Invitationals this weekend at King's College. This will be the last meet during the fall semester, and they will resume after winter break on January 14th against Misericordia University. The Marywood women's swimming and diving team took home their victory against Immaculata University on November 13th. The Pacers won their meet 155 to 194. The women's team also will be competing in the Diamond City Invitationals this week, November 20th and 21st at King's College. This will be the last meet during their fall semester and will resume after winter break on January 14th against Misericordia University. The Marywood University basketball season has officially started. The men's basketball team started their season on Friday, November 5th against Penn State Lehigh Valley where the Pacers unfortunately lost 79-80 after a hard-fought battle the boys took into overtime. On Tuesday, November 9th, our boys had a comeback as they took on Penn State Scranton winning 84-67. The team then entered the New York University tip-off tournament this past weekend and won one out of two of their games. On Saturday, the Pacers won against John Jay College 72-61, but were unfortunately unable to keep up this energy on Sunday as they lost to New York University 48-99. Up next, the Pacers will take on Karen University tonight at home in the Insulaco Arena at 6 p.m. The Marywood women's basketball team kicked off their season with a rocky start on November 5th against Lebanon Valley College, where the Pacers lost 35-61. At their next game on Thursday, November 11th, the girls lost 32-98 against the University of Scranton. In the next game, the Pacers were able to make the turnaround as they took home a 51-48 victory against FDU Fordham. Up next, the girls will be entering the Cross Country Challenge this weekend, hosted by Scranton. On Saturday, the Pacers will compete against Wilkes University, and on Sunday, they will go up against King's College. This past week, Marywood University freshman Jack Borunski was selected to the United States Track and Field Cross Country Coastage Association for the Mid-Atlantic Region team. Borunski is only the second Marywood student to receive this all-region stat for men's cross country. The only other individual was David Haynes, who received this honor in 2017, 2018, and 2019. Borunski was also selected to the Atlantic East first team and was a five-time Atlantic East Runner of the Week. Congrats, Jack. Let's check in with Soren to hear the latest in the professional sports. Soren? Thanks, Nevika. Here are the results from Week 10's NFL games. The first matchup was between the New Orleans Saints and the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans were able to beat the Saints in a close one with a score of 23-21. to The next matchup was between the Philadelphia Eagles squaring off against the Denver Broncos. The Eagles were able to come out with a huge win with the final score of 30-13. to Finally, the featured matchup was on Sunday Night Football as the Kansas City Chiefs took, home, took on the Las Vegas Raiders. The Chiefs were able to pull out a huge victory over the Raiders, 41-14 over the Raiders. Here are some NFL matchups to look forward to this Sunday as we approach Week 11 of the professional football season. To start, the Philadelphia Eagles will take on the New Orleans Saints at 1 p.m. on Fox. The next game will be the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Kansas City Chiefs at 425 on Fox. Finally, our featured game will be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Los Angeles Chargers on Sunday Night Football at 820 on NBC. Here are some of the results from the NBA games last weekend. To start, the first matchup was between the 76ers and the Indiana Pacers. The 76ers lost the game with a score of 118 to 113. Finally, the feature matchup was between the Chicago Bulls and the Los Angeles Clippers. The Bulls were able to take the victory with the final score of 100 to 90. This weekend, you can look forward to these matchups for the NBA. The first matchup will be between the Philadelphia 76ers and the Portland Trailblazers at 10 p.m. in Portland in the Mata Center and can be watched on the NBA League Pass. Also on Saturday, the Miami Heat will take on the Washington Wizards at 7 p.m. in the Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C., and can be also watched on NBA League Pass. Finally, the featured game will be the Denver Nuggets and the Phoenix Suns at 8 p.m. in Footprint Center in Phoenix, Arizona. 
and can be also watched on NBA League Pass. Here are some of the results from the college football games from last weekend. To start at noon, number six, Michigan, took on unranked Penn State. Michigan was able to sneak by with, a, with the win of the final score was 21 to 17. The next game was between number eight, Oklahoma, versus number 13, Baylor. In a surprising fashion, Baylor was able to get the victory with a final score of 27 to 14. The next game was between number 19, Purdue, and number four, Ohio State. Ohio State was able to get the victory with the final score of 59 to 31. Finally, the featured game of the week was between number 16, North Carolina State, and number 12, Wake Forest. Wake Forest was able to sneak by with the victory with a score of 45 to 42. Now here are the featured games for this Saturday. To start, number seven, Michigan State will take on number four, Ohio State at noon on ABC. Also on Saturday, number two, Alabama will take on number 25, Arkansas at 3.30 on CBS. Finally, the featured game will be number three, Oregon, taking on number 24, Utah at 7.30 on ABC. Here are some of the results from last weekend's college basketball games. To start off, number four, Villanova, took on number two, UCLA. UCLA was able to get the win in overtime with the final score of 86 to, 86 to 77. Finally, on Saturday, number one, Gonzaga, took on number five, Texas. Gonzaga was able to get the victory with the score of 86 to 74. Here are some of the college basketball games to look forward to this weekend. To start today, number four, Michigan, will take on the 2-0 UNLV at 12.30 a.m. on ESPN2. The next game will be on Saturday when number five Villanova takes on number 17 Tennessee at 1 p.m. on ESPN. Finally, on Saturday, number six Purdue will take on number 18 North Carolina on ESPN. That is all for the sports desk. That is all for sports. Back to the desk. A little girl was reunited with her teddy bear one year after losing it in Glacier National Park. Naomi Pascal was adopted from an Ethiopian orphanage in 2016, and one of the first gifts her adoptive parents gave her was a teddy bear. After a family trip to Glacier National Park in Montana last year, Teddy went missing. A park ranger found the bear in a pile of melted snow and kept it in his truck this season. A friend of the Pascals was visiting Glacier National Park when she spotted the teddy bear on the dashboard of the ranger's truck. Naomi and Teddy were reunited and the park rangers gave her a junior park ranger badge and hat. A very sweet story. That is the cutest thing I have ever heard. Very sweet. <laughs> very sweet. That's going to do it for this week's edition of TVM News. From everyone at TV Marywood, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow TV Marywood's YouTube page and like the TVM Facebook page to stay up to date on the latest happenings and to watch additional content. I'm Emma Rushworth. And I'm Ellen Franz. Have a great weekend, Marywood.